Hello there, my name is Stephen from London Flat Roofing. Uh, this is a part L of the building regulations and the draft that I've got in front of me is part L1B, work in existing buildings. So let's just try and explain to you quickly uh, what part L of the building regulations are about and I'm mainly going to talk about part L1B because most of the work that we carry out is retrofit. So new build um, is slightly different specification and normally when I come along to a roof that is a new build it's all the details have been worked out because I'm normally given site drawings but when I have um, uh, private customers come up to me, which is normally what it is when we've got smaller roofs of anywhere between 20 and 150, 200 square metres. Um, I'm, I'm always saying to them, do you understand part L of the building regulations? And they say, well, what do you mean? So I, I, I sort of tend to say this an awful lot. So what I'm trying to do now is to do a video that I can direct you to that just pinpoints a few items um, to make sure that you're aware of certain laws. So I'm just generally going to skim over it. As you can see here, it's a, a quite a big document. And what I did before I put this together, I just went over and checked a few items just to make sure that I was up to date and up to speed. So part L1B, work in existing buildings. So what it actually says in here is that if you have got an existing building and you're going to put a new flat roof on that building, if you're going to replace more than a small percentage, and the percentage is 25%, which is stated inside here, you must abide to part L of the building regulations. So you must insulate it to 0 0.02, uh, 0.025 of a U value. Um, this means that we normally have to come along and put quite a lot of insulation on the roof or in the roof. Now, I do other videos talking about that and you can go and have a look at those. I'm going to put a link, hopefully, where my finger's just pointing um, for those. Um, now, what happens is, is that um, this calculation has to be worked out. So we need to come along to your roof and assess what the existing build-up of the roof is. If the, um, the roof has already got some insulation in it, it's going to have different qualities that we're going to need to, uh, uh, to bring the roof up to. We need to work out where the vapour barriers are going to go and where the dew point is going to fall. Again, I'm not going to go into those points at the moment, but I've got other videos which do go into them. Now, Part L says that um, we need to get the local authority involved to come down and inspect the roof to make sure that we have abided by the regulations. So theoretically, what we need to do is open up a building notice, and that normally, depending on the price of your work, costs about 200 to 300 pounds. Uh, sometimes the local authority will do this on their contract amount. So uh, again, we need to discuss this further with the local authority and yourselves, depending on what's going on. I sometimes think it's quite unfair because the, on some jobs we do, the scaffolding could be, say, 50,000 pounds, and the roof could be, 500 pounds, but yet we've got 550,000 and 500 pounds worth of work going on and they're going to charge you a percentage. So again, we need to discuss that or that needs to be discussed to find out what the fee is. Um, now, once the building notice has been um, uh, opened up, we then get hold of the um, um, specifications and normally we do this by sending off all the details to the insulation suppliers. They will work out the different U values that we need to abide by and give us the thickness and specification of the insulation. On that your roof can be priced. I normally send that information off to the local authority to make sure that they are happy with that specification. Once they're happy with that specification, Obviously we can then order the materials and go ahead. Once we order the materials and they're on site and we start to install the insulation, the local authority comes along when we ask them to, to inspect it to make sure that we're using the correct materials. And when they're happy and the job's finished, they will give a certificate, certificate of compliance. Once that certificate of compliance is in your hands, you put it in your HIPS package. If you haven't got a HIPS package, because you haven't, you're not selling the property or you haven't had one yet or whatever, you wait until you have one. Um, a, a HIPS man will come along and he will go over your property and part of the HIPS package is an energy efficiency certificate. And what he actually does, he goes around and he, he looks at your light bulbs and sees how many light bulbs you've got, whether they're energy, uh, the new energy ones, etc. And he goes through his little tick um, boxes and he gives you ticks. And at the end of this, he gives you a grade of how good um, your property is. And of course, when he comes to doing your flat roof, he's going to say, 
oh, okay, you've got a flat roof there, is it uh, um, insulated? And you're gonna say, yep, yeah, here, I've got a certificate of compliance to say that it has been insulated to the new building regulations, part L of the, of the building regulations. And this is really where it's all going. And um, what we don't know is where this is all going to end up. At the moment, it's just a matter of ticking boxes, and it's something that needs to be done. It's good for the environment. Um, London Flat Roofing's policy is that we try and insulate all roofs. But the, the, the interesting thing is, is that some people don't want to do it. Is it my duty uh, or obligation to report you for doing uh, or, or not doing it? Well, actually, I find it's also a matter of interpreting the, the document where I've got in my hand because there's all sorts of different ways of interpreting the way that it's been written. Uh, they actually write it and they say um, if you are replacing more than a small percentage of the roof. Well, people come to me and they say, well, you're only putting a new membrane over the top of the roof, so uh, theoretically we're not replacing any of it. I can't say if that's correct way of interpreting it or not. It's up to you. If you don't want to insulate it and you want to take that line, which a lot of customers do, that's entirely up to you. Also, there's a couple of nice things written into this, which um, unusually it's a matter of common sense. Uh, with a lot of flat roofs that we do, you can't actually put the insulation on the roof without having other problems. And you also can't put the insulation in the roof without having other problems. So therefore, it would become really, really difficult to bring it up to the new building regulations. And again, if you read the document carefully, it says that if, if you cannot get a payback within 15 years of the installation of the insulation, uh, therefore you do not need to bring it up to the correct standards. So the, the local authorities will interpret your particular roof. And I'll give you a couple of for instances. If you've got a roof that has got a window frame, which is the window sill is very close to the roof, um, if you put insulation of 100 mil thickness on top of it, you're going to literally bury the window sill and it's not going to be a very good detail. So you really can't put insulation over the top of the roof. And just as a matter of interest, insulation over the top of a roof, uh, over the top of the decking of a roof, is what we call a warm roof and is by far the best way of doing a roof rather than putting the insulation between the roof. Um, which is called a cold roof. And again, I've got a couple of videos which talk about the two different practices, uh, but there's a lot less to go wrong and it's far cheaper to put it on top of the roof. Now, of course, if you did go for the other option and put it in between the, uh, the joists and under the roof covering, which is called a cold roof, you've got other problems, which would be removing the ceilings or removing the complete roof, including all the decking and putting it all in. But then we have thermal bridging, so then you still have to take the ceilings down, etc. The cost becomes too much, therefore do you need to do it? And again, all these things can be worked out with the local authority if we, or if you as a, as a customer want to get them involved. So hopefully I've covered all the points on this which come up, and if you have any more information, please don't hesitate to give me a phone call, uh, or you can email me through any of the questions. My name is Stephen from London Flat Roofing Limited. Thank you.